On day one, I woke up in the middle of a raging battle. Whoa, where am I? I looked around and saw that we were under attack by sentinels. I couldn't remember anything about my past. I couldn't even figure out why I was in the battlefield at all. But I knew I had a powerful regeneration ability and these cool metal claws. Whoa, these are awesome. I tested out my claws on some sentinels and they were totally awesome. But the sentinels were super strong. I wasn't tough enough to beat them. Why won't you die! I took a step back from the battle, and a strange bald man in a wheelchair approached me. Logan, follow me to safety. You're still healing. Who's Logan? My name's Bronzo. I didn't trust him, so I charged back into battle and kept fighting sentinels. I fought hard, but I was getting overpowered. They were still too strong for me. Okay, fine. Well, I looked around for the wheelchair dude, but he was gone. I couldn't fight any longer, so I fled the scene. Hey, Bronzo Army, before we go any further, I wanted to tell you about today's sponsor, a Web3 multiplayer game called The Sandbox. Together with The Sandbox, we're giving out an iPhone or $1,000 in mine coins and more to three lucky viewers. So stay tuned to find out how you can win. It has over 300,000 players and is trusted by some of the coolest brands. Big names like Snoop Dogg, The Walking Dead, and even Tony Hawk. My favorite is The Phase Clan because I love them. What I love about The Sandbox is that there's tons of user-generated content. Players can create their own high-quality dungeon crawlers, escape rooms, for a chance to win an iPhone or 1,000 mine coins. Use the link below to download the game for free on your computer. Hop onto the game and choose an experience that looks cool and complete one quest for one entry. The more quests you complete, the more entries you get. Everyone who completes one quest by the end of the month will get the Bronzo Limited Edition Silver Selfie Stick. There will only be 2,500 of these in-game so get it fast. 90 lucky winners will get a rare golden selfie stick and 10 will receive the extremely rare diamond selfie stick. This all ends March 1st. Together, if we get 10,000 downloads, the sandbox will also make me an NPC in the game and give me and a lucky viewer tickets to attend the upcoming Snoop Dogg concert in the sandbox. Thanks again to the sandbox for sponsoring this video. I wandered around for a while, but I couldn't find anyone else. I didn't know where to go, so I decided to start building a base for myself. I unleashed my claws into the nearby trees on day two, collecting wood along the way. Hey -ya, hey -ya, hey -ya. Take that tree. Okay, this should be enough. I began building a base from the ground up, and luckily, since I was super strong, it was a piece of cake. Space in my inventory was limited, so I decided to craft a few chests for some extra storage. Yeah, this is nice. There was no time to soak it all up. Enemies were approaching. Logan, you need to stop running from me and start cooperating. Who the heck are you? Stop following me. Come with us, Logan, if you know what's good for you. I don't know what's good for me, so no. Listen, your brain is very fragile right now, and I need to stabilize it. I said no! Ah! I fought the giant metal dude, but he really packed a punch. And the girl with the crazy magic sword was hard to defend against. Although I could hold my own, and I thought I was about to win the battle. But then something emitting excruciating pain began in my head. Ugh, uh. Uh, what are you, what are you doing to me? Calm down, Logan, and I'll release you. Okay, okay! Uh, uh, uh. Now, as I was saying, follow me. On day three, I was traveling along with Professor X, but I couldn't take it anymore. My suspicions got to the better of me. I stopped dead in my tracks. Listen, bub, I ain't moving one more inch unless you start answering some questions. Where are we going? Just who are you? And what do you want, huh? Logan, please. I ask that you just stop and listen. My name is Charles Xavier, and I run a school for mutants like yourself. I can see that your memory has been fragmented, and it is my intent to restore it once we get back to my school. Okay, fine. After an hour or so, we finally made it to the school. It was massive! Welcome to Charles Xavier's School for Gifted Youngsters. As we walked through the entrance to the school, we seemed to attract the attention of a lot of the faculty and the students. They were all looking at me. It was starting to make me nervous. Hey there, Logan. Huh, that's not my name. I was suddenly super angry, and I wasn't sure why, but I wasn't going to let that stop me. Stay focused, Logan. You're lucky, bub. Come along. I followed Professor X into another grand room. I'm going to use my telepathy to show you what happened 
and how you lost your memory. I just need you to hop into that enclosure over there. I hopped into the tank and Xavier approached me. He began using his telepathy and I started to have a vision. I got a glimpse of my past when I was having some sort of experiments performed on me. I was restrained in a tank as some sort of metal was injected into me. I then woke up from the dream. I'm done with your experiments, cue ball. Fine. But I must request that you stay here. It is the safest course of action for everyone. There is a room for you upstairs. All right, bet. On day four, I was relaxing in my room when I heard some commotion outside. It was a gorgeous lady and some dude with some weird glasses. What is wrong with you? That is totally ridiculous. Ah, uh, come on, babe. I was just kidding. It sounded like they were fighting, so I listened in closer. If that's what you really think, then I don't think I can be around you right now. Fine. Be that way. I'm out of here. With that, the dude stormed off, and I went out to talk to the lady. Uh, hey. Oh, hey, Logan. I'm not Logan. I'm Bronzo. Oh, okay. Well, I'm still Jean Grey. <laughs> what was all that fuss about? I could hear it from my bedroom. Oh, uh, me and Cyclops were just having a fight. Oh, well, you're really pretty, and, and he sounded like a jerk. You should totally dump him. What? No, it was just a little fight. Why would you say that? Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, gotta go. I ran off and came across a motorcycle. I'm taking this. Hey, that's my bike. What are you doing? Get back here. I ignored that guy and took off in my new motorcycle. On days five and six, I was riding along in my new motorcycle when I was suddenly hit from the side by an orange flash. Whoa, what the heck? Who are you? What? You don't recognize me, Bronzo? My name's not- Oh, wait, that is my name. Yeah, you think I'd forget my own brother's name? Okay, now I'm extremely confused. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Magneto sent me here. Who the heck is Magneto? Suddenly, we were both ambushed by a couple of sentinels. We banded together to fight them, but they were super strong. Let's team up on one of them. We ganged up on one together and destroyed it. And then we worked on the other one together. And eventually we were able to break it enough to get it to stop fighting. Malfunction, malfunction. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I thought, sucker. It dropped a note and it said, Trask Industries. Huh, this must be a product of Trask Industries. Wait, what's that? I turned around to look at Sabretooth, but he was gone. Huh, where'd he go? On day seven and eight, I drove my motorcycle back to the school. I saw Jean Grey hanging out, so I approached her. Hey, I just wanted to say I'm sorry for acting the way I did earlier. That was super weird. Yeah, it was. Is there anything I can do? Can you just be cool? I want us to be friends like we used to be. Suddenly, this triggered a memory of my old life with my old girlfriend, Silver Fox. My head started throbbing with pain. It was my birthday, and I was in a log cabin with Silver Fox. Hey, I'm gonna go get some grub. I'll be back soon. I went out to kill some cows and collect their meat, but when I got back to the cabin, Silver Fox was dead. Happy birthday, brother. Hey, Logan, are you okay? I, I'm fine. I gotta go. I found my way to a training area in the school. Hey, look who it is. Bronzo, that's who it is. <laughs> okay, sure. Why don't you come into the ring and show us what you can do, Bronzo? Yeah, I could use an anger release right now. I sparred with a few different X-Men. I had already fought against the metal giant, so it was easy. The ice guy was tougher since he would freeze me, but my anger was able to heat me back up and finally defeat him. Much better. Thanks for the spar. I'll be in my room if you need me. On days nine and 10, I suddenly woke up to the sound of explosions and fighting. Huh, what's going on? I ran to the window to discover that the school was being attacked by sentinels. Ugh, not these things again. I ran out and started clawing at the machines with some help from Cyclops and Iceman. We were able to do some real damage to the freaks. Cyclops used his lasers and Iceman his freezing abilities. So the sentinels were no match against us. Eventually, by working together, we were able to take them all out. Woohoo, nice work, everyone. Jean ran out and kissed Cyclops on the cheek. You were so brave out there. <laughs> uh, thanks, babe. I watched as they walked away, and I started to get sad again. I couldn't remember much, but I knew I really missed Silver Fox. Just then, Professor X approached me. Logan, you did good work out there. Follow me, I want to talk to you about something. I don't know, I don't really feel like it right now. Oh, come on, champ. There's more to life than girls. <sighs> Fine.
On days 11 through 13, Professor X took me to Cerebro and explained to me it was a place where his powers were strongest. I brought you here because I have something I need your help with. A mission? Sort of. I need you to help me find Magneto and his brotherhood of mutants. How am I gonna do that? Well, I can use your memories to find the essence of others. And we know that wherever Sabretooth is, Magneto will be close by. Yeah, what's the deal with that Sabretooth guy anyway? He's my brother or something? You two have a long history. You're going to have to discover that for yourself. Okay, why are you looking for Magneto? We have a fairly long history too. He's an old friend, and I need to ask his assistance in the battle against Trask. Sure, where do we start? Right now, Logan. Suddenly, my brain started hurting again. I had a vision of Sabretooth and myself fighting in a war. We were fighting side by side, and it looked like it was a really long time ago. We were winning too. Bronzo, wake up. I know where Magneto's base is. Ah, uh, come on! It was just getting good! Wait, did you just call me Bronzo? Yes, I've seen inside your mind and I know who Bronzo is now. I've seen all the lives that you lived. I really liked your Rainbow Friends episode. Whoa, cool! Will you gather a few other X-Men and visit Magneto on my behalf? Sir, yes sir! On days 14 through 17, I asked around the school where Cyclops would be and was directed to his room in the dormitory. I barged in without a second thought. You're coming with me on a mission. Dude, do you knock at all? No. <sighs> What's the mission? You're coming with me on a mission. Okay, geez, dude, relax. Can Jean come with us at least? No. What? Why not? Cause I said so, bub. Follow me. Cyclops and I looked for another X-Man to help, eventually deciding on Colossus. Why do you want me to join? I mean, come on. Have you seen Cyclops over here? Man looks like he weighs 130 pounds soaking wet. Hey. We need some more muscle. You've got it. Count on me. We rode out together down the road in search of Magneto. But along the way, we encountered a few sentinels. Cyclops immediately started using his optic blasts. And I hopped off to start slashing the raging rust buckets. Alongside us, Colossus used his oversized fists to punch holes through the sentinels. It was not long before we put the bots out of commission. Nice job, Cyclops. Thanks, Logan. What about me, comrade? Yeah, yeah, good job too, I, I guess. Hmm. All right, let's go. We got no time to lose. On days 18 through 21, we made it to Magneto's base, and it was surprisingly empty. Where is everybody? Hmm, maybe it's a trap. Yeah, whatever. If it is, there's three of us. We can take them. True. You stay out here and keep watch while I go in. All right, you got it. With that, I entered the base and searched around. Magneto, Magneto, where are you? I didn't see him anywhere, but I ran into somebody else instead. It was a strange man with a mustache and a brown suit. Hello there, Logan. I've been expecting you. My name actually isn't, eh, Never mind. Who the heck are you? And where's Magneto? My name is Dr. Boulevard Trask. And as far as where Magneto is, that's not something you'll need to worry about anymore. I hope you like neurotoxin. Nighty night. What's that supposed to- oh, 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 I feel sleepy. Before I could even get another word in, I blacked out. On days 22 through 25, I woke up in a cell. Whoa, what the heck happened? Ah, good, you're awake. You! Wait, Magneto? Hello, Logan. I see you've been captured as well. Yeah, I was looking for you. Don't get too comfortable now. I'll be putting you two to work soon enough. What's your plan, Trask? Whatever it is, you won't get far, as long as I'm alive. Telling you my plan would be silly now, wouldn't it? Oh man, that usually works. You know what? Why don't I tell you anyways, since you won't be able to stop me. There it is. As you have seen, I'm creating a new line of super robots, and I will use them to destroy every mutant on Earth. Humans have had enough of the chaos you mutants cause. Why you little? Uh, 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 don't be rude. There's nothing you can do to stop me, Logan. Nothing. With that, Trask left the area. So, what now? Just stand back. I'll handle this. I did as he told, and he used his powers to break open the metal bars immediately. Wait, you mean you could do that the whole time? Why didn't we kill that guy when we had the chance? Now is not the time. You have much to remember. Come on. I left with Magneto, and together we escaped the facility. 
On days 26 through 29, we got outside, and the Brotherhood of Mutants were waiting for us with Professor X and a few X-Men. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's going on here? Something tells me these are bad guys. Don't worry, Bronzo. They're cool. They have agreed to join forces to stop a greater evil. Okay, whatever you say, but I'm keeping my eye on you. If they ever even think about double-crossing us, it's over! I was staring them down when I noticed a pretty blue lady among them. Oh, hello. She approached me, and I introduced myself. Oh, what's your name? Oh, you really hit your head hard, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, but seriously, what's your name? Wait, you, re you really don't remember me at all. Does Mystique ring a bell? Uh... We used to date! Ugh, you are such a jerk! Dang, I used to date you? I did pretty well. <sighs> Wait, come back! Hey! On days 30 through 33, I was following after Mystique, and eventually she stopped. What? I'm sorry I was rude back there. <sighs> it's okay. So, Mystique is it? What's your power? Here, let me show you. Suddenly, she transformed into an exact copy of me. Hey, look at me. I'm a dum-dum with big sharp claws and a memory that's nowhere to be found. All right, all right, I get it. Not a very good impression if I'm being honest. But hey, you're a shapeshifter. That's pretty cool. Not just that. I also study people. I understand people better than they understand themselves. Whoa, creepy. And we used to date? <sighs> there you go again. <sighs> See, this is why we broke up. You're so conceited. Well, true. Hey, why don't I make it up to you? How? Let's go back to the school. I'm sure some of the other X-Men would love to meet you. Um, I'm not so sure of that. What? Why not? I don't really get along with the X-Men. It's fine. We all have an alliance now. Come on, let's go. Well, all right. At the beginning of days 34 through 37, I made it back to Xavier's school with Mystique. So this is it, huh? Sure is. Oh, uh, what do you think? It's okay, I guess. Okay? No, 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 no. Let me show you around, and we'll see if it's still okay. And so I showed Mystique all of the cool places around the school. The classrooms, the cafeteria, the training area, and the rec room. She seemed very impressed. So, is it still just okay? Our conversation was cut short by the eruption of indistinct shouting. We should go check that out. Mystique and I followed the shouting to a particular room and decided to do a little eavesdropping. You're just trying to hold me back! I'm merely trying to protect us all, to protect you. Uh, Jean then stormed out of the room and passed the two of us. Out of my way, Smurf. Uh, rude. It's her deal. Beats me. We went up to Professor X to talk to him. She cannot accept that she isn't ready. Powers like hers require absolute control. If Ms. Gray attempts to unleash the full extent of her power, she could very well end us all should her concentration waver for even a moment. Dang. An awkward silence enveloped the room. I looked at Mystique, unsure of what to say next. Oh, it appears that you two have caught up. Yeah, we did. Mm, something like that. If you'll excuse me, please, I have many things to attend to. Professor X moved past us and down the hall. I think I'm gonna try to go catch up with Jean. Uh, make yourself at home. Uh, sure. I looked around for Jean during days 38 to 41. Hey, there you are. What was all that back there? The professor doesn't believe in me, that's all. Well, I do. How could you Logan, you don't even remember who you were. Sheesh, that was harsh. Yeah, I'm sorry. Hey, why don't I help you remember? That would be great. How do we start? Listen to my voice and close your eyes. Try to remember. Okay, here we go. I closed my eyes and suddenly I was in the middle of a fight. Jean was there as well. Come on, is this all you got? My granny hits harder than this. I'm the best at what I do, but what I do isn't the best. Eventually, we cleared all the enemies. I see teamwork out there. Same. I'd do anything to protect you. Always remember I love you, Logan. Everything was fine, but very quickly what seemed to be a great memory turned into a nightmare. Why didn't you save me? Ugh, what? This isn't real! I pulled out my claws, but then I immediately heard Jean yell in pain. Ah, help! 
Eugene, uh, I'm sorry. Dude, what the heck is your problem? No, I didn't mean it. I swear. From days 42 to 45, there was a large meeting being held by Professor X involving all the X-Men and the Brotherhood of Mutants. As we all know, there is a threat among us mutants. He goes by the name of Trask, Bolivar Trask. He has gone haywire and wants to eradicate all mutants. We simply cannot let that happen. I will be forming teams amongst you all. Unfortunately, one of our strongest members is in recovery at the moment, but we will try our best to overcome this. Gene. For them, Team 1 will be Cyclops, Colossus, and Nightcrawler. Team 2 will be Gambit, Rogue, and Pyro. And Team 3 will consist of Wolverine, Quicksilver, and Storm. The rest of you will stay here and defend against potential threats to the school. I myself will oversee the operation alongside Magneto to make sure everything runs smoothly. If you need me, I have equipped all of you with radios for ease of communication. Now, teams, go out there and stop Trask. My team and I traveled from days 46 to 49, looking for Trask's Sentinel Factory. Okay, we need a plan, because clearly we're lost. If I didn't have to wait for you guys, I would have found it by now. If you call me slow one more time, I'm gonna really get upset. Guys, guys, we won't get anywhere if we end up fighting each other. Fine. Fine. So then, let's get the move on. My sources say the facility is up ahead. Eventually, the three of us made it to the compound. There were Sentinels all around. So, what's the plan, Wolverine? Storm, these things are water resistant, but maybe not shock proof. If you can generate enough energy to shut them down, that would be awesome. What about me? Just go fast and hit them where it hurts. And you? I'll tear them to shreds. I'm the best at what I do, but what I do ain't the best. Let's wait for a better time to strike. On days 50 to 53, the entire group was outside a massive facility. All right, guys, now's a better time than any. We know that Trask is in there somewhere. We rushed out from hiding and attacked the Sentinels. With our powers combined, we absolutely clobbered these tin cans. Storm used her powers to shock them with lightning and Quicksilver ran so Circles around them. We have done it. Now we should go find Trask. Suddenly, one of the Sentinels wired back to life. They lifted their head, and their eyes glowed a bright red. They're not supposed to be doing that, yes? Yeah, no, this is new. Fan out. Fighting the rebooted Sentinels was no easy feat. As part of their upgrades, they were able to use abilities that hindered each of our powers directly. One of the Sentinels used some sort of force field to enclose Storm in a box-like structure. <laughs> So that's your trick, huh? Well, I hate to break it to you, but you can't put me in a box if you can't catch me. What? How did that not kill you? Storm, Quicksilver! I was distracted, and the Sentinel landed a cheap hit on me, knocking me to the ground. Somehow it could hold me in place and started pouring water on me. Ugh. What's going on? Everything was going wrong. We couldn't defeat them. As I laid on the ground, watching my squad get beaten, I knew I needed to do something. I mustered up the strength to stand on my own two feet. Fall back. We need to get out of here. My team and I managed to escape and catch our breaths from days 54 to 57. What the heck happened back there? It seems like the Sentinels are evolving to combat us. You two should join the others on the east front. I'm going to head back to the school. Hopefully I'm not too late. See ya. You got it. I kept walking, and luckily for me, there was a motorcycle on the side of the road. <laughs> Lucky day, I guess. With that, I rode back to Xavier's school. Meanwhile, the other teams were doing their best to try and fend off the Sentinels, but they were outnumbered and outpowered. Trask was actually getting away with his plan. We even lost some brothers and sisters in the battles. The only thing I could hope for was that the school was still intact. The first part of days 58 through 61 were spent on the road to Xavier's school, and even from a distance, I knew something was up. That's not good. I got to the school as fast as I could, but once I was there, I found that it had been completely destroyed. I need to find survivors. I ran quickly into the smoldering ruins to find anyone who might still be alive. Found you. Wait. But when I got closer, I saw that they were already dead. I moved on, looking for someone, anyone, and discovered an underground passageway. They must have used this to escape. I need to catch up with the rest of them. While down in the tunnel, I started to have a splitting mic grain. My head! It felt like my brain was trying to escape my skull. The pain was so excruciating. I was assaulted by images of the time I was being experimented on in Stryker's lab. It seemed like I was dying. Internal body temperature levels are rising, sir. 
These numbers aren't sustainable! Then get it under control! He's... he's gone, sir. As the images of me slaughtering everyone in the lab faded into memory, I came back to reality. <sighs> I, I remember now. I stood right up and kept moving on in the underground passageways. On day 62 to 65, I met up with Xavier and the rest of the squad. Logan, I'm so happy to see you. Glad you're still with us, Professor. What's the plan? Xavier sighed, knowing that what he had to say next would be difficult to hear. We lost a lot of our brothers and sisters out there. Krask has undeniably outsmarted us. What about Jean? Can't she unleash her full power on them? No. I won't allow it. It's too dangerous. Dangerous enough for all of us to sit around and die. We gotta do something. A silence fell over the room, only to be broken by the professor. You wouldn't understand. She isn't ready. She could destroy everything if we aren't careful. Then what should we do? We should be using the Brotherhood of Mutants to our advantage. I will speak with Magneto. You go find Sabretooth. I want nothing to do with that monster. Understandable. Find Bistique instead. Talking to her might be worse. Well, then make a decision. Uh. At the beginning of days 66 through 70, I searched around the underground encampment for Mystique. Mystique! Mystique! I found her hanging out around some debris and nervously approached her. Uh, hey there. What do you want this time? We need a plan to stop Trask. Got any good ones cooking? A plan? She finally turned to look at me. Oh, I've got a plan. I'm going to infiltrate Trask Industries disguised as the man himself. I was confused, not seeing the full picture. And what good would that do? All of his files and schematics that allow him to mass produce the Sentinels are kept in an encrypted vault. And you're hoping that they'll just give you the keys to it? No, silly. Trask is the key. It's encrypted using retina scans, face recognition, and fingerprints. Ah. I was finally beginning to understand the plan. That's brilliant. Then, Jean Grey had approached, overhearing our little conversation. I will admit it sounds good on paper, but if it was that easy, don't you think we would have done that by now? Okay, now I'm confused again. Why would that not work? It's foolproof. Yes, please, Jean, enlighten us. The Sentinels are getting smarter and stronger with each passing day. They would know it's Mystique and not Trask. Oh. There's only one way to win this. And that's with my powers. Prove it then. Not here. We should go somewhere more open. The three of us made our way to the surface, into an open field. Jean created a safe distance between us and her. Well, here goes nothing. Jean Grey concentrated with all her might to summon the full extent of her power. But after several minutes, it became apparent that she couldn't do it. Jean then fell to the ground panting. <sighs> I don't understand. Why can't I do it? Well, so much for that idea. It was worth a shot, but Professor Xavier was right. Jean needs more training. But that takes time. Something we don't have. What now? <sighs> I have to talk to the person I hate the most. On days 71 through 74, I confronted Sabretooth to ask him if he had any ideas. Hey, how do we stop Trask? If I knew, don't you think I would have spoken up by now? I don't know, maybe. It's not like I trust you. I don't know what could possibly make you not trust me. Well, I've been trying to remember, and I think it all started at the circus. <laughs> Look at that freak! Hey, psst, hey. Huh? Who said that? Over here. I'm gonna break you out. Who are you? It's me, your half-brother's other half-brother. It's all Creed. Sorry, doesn't ring a bell. Why does everybody forget about me? Your brother Saul broke me out, but he was doing it to sell me to another evil. So I had to kill him and run away. Yes, you killed my brother, so I had to make things fair. By killing my girlfriend? She did nothing to you, you animal! With that, I stormed off, but I quickly ran into Jean Grey. Hey, Jean, what's up? I'm ready. I'm going to stop this once and for all. Jean, don't. I can't lose you. There's nothing you or Cyclops can do to stop me. I'm going. Before I could do anything else to stop her, she was gone. On day 75 to 78, I started by telling Cyclops that Jean had run away. That's not good. She's not ready yet. I know. Where do you think she went? She most likely went to the Sentinel factory. We have to stop her. Together. Follow me. 
We rode side by side with a mutual goal. Finally, I returned back to the Sentinel factory with Cyclops. We found Jean there, trying to unleash her full potential. Jean, come down. Oh man, she can't even hear me. Come on, Jean. It's too dangerous. Dangerous was right. Jean began overloading herself and became the Dark Phoenix. Shoot, what do we do? I don't know. Try to talk to her. Maybe she will recognize your voice. Jean began destroying all the Sentinels. She was unstoppable. Hey, sweetie. Remember when I brought you flowers that one time? Really, bro? That's all you got? I'm working on it. She wasn't slowing down. She continued to obliterate everything in sight. Nothing I say is working. I'm going in to stop her. No, it's not safe. I don't care. Jean, Jean, I'm right here. Just stop. Oh no, Cyclops! I knew it was all up to me now. Or as the professor said, we would all be doomed. Jean, stop now! I don't want to kill you! Get away from me! I slowly made my way towards her while getting blasted with high amounts of power. I'm afraid I have no choice. I'm sorry, Jean. I love you! I then impaled her with my claws and she immediately died. No! On days 79 to 82, I walked to the grounds, and everything was quiet. It felt like the world itself was mourning the loss of our two friends. Ugh, it's not the same without them. We had a funeral for Jean and Cyclops the next day, along with all the others we've lost in this journey. Professor X was in front of it all, and began his eulogy for the fallen heroes. We are gathered here today to celebrate the lives of these brave men and women. During Xavier's speech, I noticed Magneto across the field, glaring at him. We mustn't blame people for the things they cannot control. Once the funeral was over, I trailed Magneto to see what he might be up to. Hmm, what's going on with you? Nothing seemed out of the ordinary at first, but then I lost him for a moment when he went into a room. He emerged minutes later with Sabretooth, and I continued following him. I trailed them for another minute or two, until Sabretooth spotted me. Oh, I tried to hide, but it was too late. Sabretooth told me to come over. Brunzo, what are you doing? What does it look like? I'm trailing you because it looks like you're up to some funny business. <sighs> that isn't Magneto, you fool. Just then, Magneto started transforming. It was Mystique all along. So. We're not up to anything nefarious. We're trying to come up with a way to beat Trask just like everybody else. Oh. So please, stop following us. Yeah, okay. I left and started wandering back when Quicksilver ran up to me. Hey, you were right not to trust my father. I know where he is. Let me show you. Okay. I followed Quicksilver the best I could, but he often forgets how fast he is going. Eventually, we made it to the place and spotted Magneto and Xavier having a heated chat. On days 83 to 86, Quicksilver and I were eavesdropping on Magneto and Xavier. They were having an argument on how to handle the anti-mutant threat. The blood is on your hands. That's foolish for you to say. You sat around doing nothing. What are you two looking at? Got a blast. Come in, Bronzo. It's not looking good. What's the new plan? We will come up with a plan to stop Trask one way or another. Just then, there was a message that popped up on Xavier's desk. Good evening, nerds. Trask. We then all walked up to the desk to listen to the message. Where are you right now? I just wanted to give you a heads up. My sentinels are even stronger now. And I have an army of them headed towards you right now as we speak. Would you like a pedicure as well? <clears throat> no, not no. Ta-ta, nerds. Wow! He totally did that typical villain thing of telling the protagonist his plans rather than just letting it happen. Shut, Shut up. up! You're all just hating. Let's ride! Anyway, we must prepare for battle. It was a peaceful set of days from days 87 to 90. Peaceful until our hideout was discovered. A loud metallic crash rang through the building in the early morning hours. I wasn't sure what was happening at first until Iceman ran past me shouting. We're under attack. I ran with Iceman into the main room and there he was in a massive mecha sentinel. Trask. Trask. Hello again. I'm surprised you came here yourself and miss the front row seats to your demise? I don't think so. Trask and his big robot shot me with some molten weapon that I was only narrowly able to dodge. Time for a counterattack. I tried to climb up the robot and rip Trask out myself. No, you don't. He pulled out another weapon and shot me to the ground. Ugh. 
Adamantium bullets. <laughs> Stay there, why don't you? And watch your friends get destroyed. But Trask was sorely mistaken. He may have beaten me, but the teamwork of the X-Men and the Brotherhood of Mutants was nothing to mess around with. Looks like you were wrong, Trask. But Trask didn't seem to be listening to me at all. He looked like a human computer taking in heaps of information. Fascinating. Sentinels, retreat! We got what we came for. As Trask and the rest of the Sentinels fled the scene, I was left with one thought. The Professor. We need to regroup with him. Make sure he's okay. What I saw was something I was not prepared for in the slightest. Professor! Xavier was dead, being cradled in the arms of Magneto. My anger was building inside of me. What happened? What happened? I snapped at Magneto, but he looked just as devastated as the rest of us. There. There was nothing I could do. The sentinel that attacked Charles and I was constructed from a high-density polymer plastic, something my powers could not interact with. We were helpless. No! Magneto rose, stepping around Xavier, and began to address all of the other mutant onlookers. I will command you all in Charles's stead. We haven't always seen eye to eye, but I will do my best to honor his legacy. I wasn't sure about this. Magneto seemed awfully suspicious. Don't you think it's more than a little disrespectful to just take the professor's position so quickly? Magneto looked back at me, evidently annoyed. You forget yourself, Wolverine. Pleasantries and decorum are for times of peace. We're at war, boy. I can't believe you. No one will stand for this. Right, guys? I turned around to find that most of the X-Men seemed to agree with Magneto rather than myself. Guys, come on! You're not just going to let him walk all over us, are you? Magneto put a hand on my shoulder, speaking in a soft voice, as if he was trying to console me. Now is not the time for infighting. Trask is a threat to our continued existence. Wolverine, I understand that you're upset. Why don't you take some time to mourn? I, I, but, but we, we, <sighs> I slowly shuffled off back to my room. Maybe I should take his advice. In the early hours of the first morning of days 91 through 93, Quicksilver appeared in my room. Whoa, hey, a little privacy. I don't like how my father is in charge now. I know something must be up. Yeah, I agree. I don't trust Magneto, but intuition isn't enough to convince anyone. Then we need proof. Maybe if we beat the magnets out of him, that ought to get him to spill the beans. Eh, I think we're gonna need more subtlety than that. Plus, he controls metal, and you're, uh, made of it. Hmm, true. He's still asleep right now. We gotta act fast before he gets up for the day. Roger that. Quicksilver had a plan, and he sprung into action. First, he stole the Cerebro helmet from Xavier's office and brought it to Magneto's room. Careful with that thing. We both snuck into Magneto's room, and he placed the helmet on Magneto, and then turned to me. Okay, do you know how this thing works? What? No, I thought you did. Just then, Magneto started waking up, but Quicksilver got us out of there before he noticed us. Well, it was worth a shot. Magneto knew something was up, and he was getting suspicious during days 94 to 96. There are traitors among us. We need to lock up the rogue, considering she has the power to take away our gifts. If Trask gets his hands on her, that would be the end for us. No, this is stupid. She's just a child. I won't go. Not without a fight. I think we found our traitor. Sabretooth tried to confront Rogue, but it didn't go as planned when she touched him. Hey, what gives? Where's my power? <laughs> nice try. I can take away mutant abilities, idiot. Good thing I'm not a mutant. Get over here! Juggernaut approached Rogue, and she tried to touch him to take away his powers, but it didn't work. Please don't take me away. <laughs> Come along, girly. Everyone watched as the giant took away Rogue. Meeting adjourned. I approached Mystique after Magneto left. This is unfair. I agree. Let's talk somewhere else. We then found a private room to talk. Help me break Rogue out. I don't think that's a good idea, but I do know where we can find Magneto. Good. I want to talk to him once and for all. I followed Mystique all the way to where Magneto was hiding. On days 97 and 98, I arrived where Magneto was hiding with Mystique. Before I went to confront him, Mystique stopped me. Be careful. Of course. She left as I approached Magneto for the last time. Magneto, what are you doing? I'm the only one who has what it takes to defeat Trask. I'm gonna do it myself. 
That's ridiculous. We'll be more powerful together. No, thank you. I'm going to take him down alone, and then the whole world will see what I can do. Why can't you just work as a team for once? A message must be sent, not just to Trask, but to the rest of the world. If we don't do that, then after we beat Trask, there will be just another to take his place. But why do you need to do it alone in order to send a message? Hmm. You just want to do it to look better than the rest of us. Took you long enough to figure it out. I will get everyone's attention as the most powerful mutants, and once I've earned the trust of the humans, it will be that much easier to wipe them out. You're no better than Trask. Suddenly, he used his powers to raise me up and push me against a wall and pin me down. Every single bone in my body was being pinned in place. There was nothing I could do. I'll admit it. I was the one who killed Xavier. I did it while everyone was distracted by the Sentinels. I knew it, you monster! Just when I thought all hope was lost, Quicksilver appeared with Rogue, and Rogue touched Magneto, making him lose his powers. That's for locking me up, you monster. Ah, no! This is our only chance. My father is evil, and there's no changing that. Finish him! With that, I stabbed Magneto, finishing him off once and for all. On day 99, I informed the surviving X-Men what happened to Magneto. I had to do what I had to do. That's crazy, bro. Look, the battle is about to begin. We must fight for the future of mutant kind. Yeah, yeah. One more thing, make sure you like the video. Comment down below what kind of video you want to see Bronzo do next. And subscribe so you never miss another video. Sweet! Yeah. Nice! Yay. Now let's go take Trask down. We had trouble waiting for us outside of the new Trask Industry building. There were loads of sentinels already attacking. Fight! 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 The battle was huge. Everyone came together in these final moments. We almost have them. Keep fighting! As the battle roared on, I spotted Trask going inside of the building. You won't get away that easily. It was finally day 100, and I reached Trask just in time. Or so I thought. It's over, big guy. I got you right where I want you. Do you really? Because I think I got you right where I want you. Stop copying me. You're the last thing standing in my way, and now I'm gonna take you out. Trask got inside of his sentinel mech, which was much bigger than all the previous ones. I charged at him, and we fought, and I came back with all my might. The robot hit way harder than any sentinel I had encountered yet, and he was very quickly getting the upper hand on me. Ha! Is that all you can do? At least I'm not hiding in a robot suit. This new sentinel mech was different. It had abilities from some of the previous heroes it had battled. Freezing cold like Iceman, lightning from Storm, and some new powers I'd never seen before. You won't win this fight, Trask. We fought long and hard, but no matter how much damage the Sentinel did to me, with my regeneration powers, he couldn't possibly kill me. Slowly over time, I wore down the mech suit. I dealt one big final blow, and the suit was destroyed. Malfunction, malfunction, malfunction. No. No! Suddenly, the whole thing exploded, destroying Trask in a blazing fireball. He was defeated. Yes, I won! Bronzo! Once again, don't forget to download Sandbox using my link down below for a chance to win an iPhone or $1,000 in mine coins and a selfie stick to use in game. Thanks Sandbox for sponsoring this video.